Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Staff Sergeant Matt Nall and the invocation which will be delivered by Chaplain Donald L. Rutherford. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled Banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. And let us pray. God of the ages, before your eyes, history is written and yet you are changeless. Be present with us in these moments of honor and remembrance. Remind us that valor is found across the years and throughout the ranks. From the private, bearing his unit's colors during the Civil War, to a master sergeant leading the platoon in World War II, culminating in a captain serving as an advisor in Afghanistan, valor truly is present. In the face of adversity, may we remember the events of the Battle of Zanjigal, and the men who fought there, may their strength, honor, and courage inspire us and sustain our army for the living of all of these days. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief of Staff of the Army, Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to see so many people here. It's really a privilege to see such a great turnout to honor Captain William Swenson, who today joins a rare fraternity of military service members who have displayed extraordinary acts of valor during exceptional circumstances with great risk to their own personal safety. Captain Swenson embodies the essence of a soldier and represents what every man and woman who dons this uniform strives to be. An individual has earned the trust of all with whom they associate. One who possesses a humility, a selflessness that we all respect. One who embraces esprit de corps and routinely demonstrates a dedication to his profession that epitomizes the ethos of the American soldier. In the face of imminent danger, he never quit. He always put his mission first. He never accepted defeat. And above all else, he never left his fallen comrades. Just as he was there for them that day, his friends, his band of brothers are here for him today. On September 8, 2009, five service members made the ultimate sacrifice. And their presence is felt in the hearts of everyone here. We remember First Lieutenant Michael Johnson, United States Marine Corps. Gunnery Sergeant Aaron 
Knefik, U.S. Marine Corps. Gunnery Sergeant Edward jo Edwin Johnson, U.S. Marine Corps. Hospitalman Third Class James Layton, U.S. Navy. And Sergeant First Class Kenneth Westbrook, United States Army. We are honored to have their Gold Star family members here with us today. So I'd ask them to please stand and be recognized. I'd also like to recognize some of our distinguished guests. Secretary Hagel, the Secretary of Defense, sir, thank you for being here. Representatives Jeff Denham from California and Tulsi Gabbard from Hawaii, thank you so much for both being here. Secretary McHugh, Secretary of the Army. The a Acting Secretary Fanning, United States Air Force, sir, thank you for being here. General Marty Dempsey, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, sir, thank you for being here. General Mark Swells, Thank you, sir, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General Sullivan, the head of AUSA and the 32nd Chief of Staff of the Army, General John Campbell, the Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, and Sar Major of the Army, Ray Chandler, my battle buddy, thank you for being here. Other distinguished guests from the Department of Defense, Army leadership that are joining us today, and the Marine Corps and all our other service members. I'd like to extend a special welcome to Captain Swenson's family and friends his father, Carl, and his mother, Julia, and Miss Kelsey Long. Uh, I also want to recognize several members of the Marine Corps and Army who are on the ground with Will that fateful day in Conjugal. Thank you so much for your service to our nation. Your sacrifice is a dedication. Your presence today reinforces the personal nature of combat and the strong bonds formed under extraordinary conditions. I'd like you all to stand as well and be recognized, all of those who are there. Are there. It was on September 8, 2009, that Army Captain Will Swenson and Sergeant First Class Westbrook were part of a combined patrol with Afghan National Border Police and an Afghan National Army unit and their 12th Marine, and 12 Marine Corps advisors and Navy medic. Together, the group set off for the village of Conjugal in Kunar Province to meet with village elders and discuss the creation of a local security force. Just after dawn, as they approached the outskirts of the village on foot, they were ensnarled in a vicious ambush. Over 60 well-armed insurgents began firing heavy machine guns, rocket-propelled grenades, and small arms from entrenched positions in the village and the surrounding mountains. Captain Swenson and the patrol were pinned down behind low stone walls while a lead team was trapped in a courtyard. Sniper rounds and explosions impacted closer and closer while the insurgents taunted the patrol over the radio, demanding their surrender. As the enemy began to envelop the patrol, the reality set in that the men were surrounded, outmanned, and outgunned. Captain Swenson began radio radioing for artillery and aviation support but the brigade's aerial scout weapons teams was already supporting other troops in contact to the north. Dangerously exposed, he repeatedly called for smoke to conceal the withdrawal. The men continued to hold their ground, and at one point the enemy got so close that Will threw a hand grenade to keep them at bay. As the patrol bounded back, continuous enemy fire wounded many of the men including the ranking officer, U.S. Marine Corps Major Williams, 
and Captain Swenson's teammate, Sergeant First Class Westbrook. In the fury of the attack, Will took charge. With one hand, he treated Sergeant First Class Westbrook, and with the other, he held a radio hand mic, identifying enemy targets to scout weapons team that had just arrived on station. Receiving word of a medevac helicopter inbound, Captain Swenson exposed himself to enemy fire and marked the landing zone by holding a single panel on top of him. As the helicopter landed, Will loaded Sergeant First Class Westbrook inside and returned to the battle. As the majority of the patrol withdrew from the valley, Captain Swenson returned to the kill zone in an unarmed truck to evacuate the dead and wounded Afghan soldiers and police. Next, he organized a recovery party for the lead team of three Marines, a Navy corpsman, and they were still trapped in the initial ambush location. Then he drove back into the ambush zone, stopping to treat wounded Afghans and mark the locations for extraction. While aerial platforms searched for the missing service members, Captain Swenson waited in the open continuing to take fire from the enemy. The enemy contact was so intense that a combat search and rescue helicopter sent to assist was unable to land. After an hour, the helicopter located the missing men and confirmed that they had been killed in action. Once again, Will exposed himself to continuous enemy machine gun fire to recover his fallen comrades and return them to base. Captain Swenson symbolizes what's best about our soldiers and our army. Taking charge on a battlefield early, early that morning, Will led a team of brothers in arms against great odds and rallied them in their efforts to save each other. In the end, the battle lasted nearly six hours, and Will had returned to the kill zone four times to treat and evacuate wounded service members and our coalition partners. On September 8, 2009, Captain Will Swenson demonstrated incredible competence, technical and tactical proficiency, leading a joint combined arms team under fire, taking an extreme situation and performing to the best of his ability. He demonstrated commitment to every fellow service member, to our multinational partners, and he brought honor upon our nation. He demonstrated great character. He understood the inherent trust that must exist between service members. In combat, the uniform you wear is inconsequential. What matters are the men and women you live, sleep, eat, and fight with. And that unspoken, unspoken commitment that you have to each other. Captain Will Swenson's strength of character is undeniable. Even after the battle, Will was not afraid to point out deficiencies in the operation that caused difficulties in obtaining, uh, obtaining the appropriate and timely support necessary. He recognized the importance of assessing performance and had the character to stick to his convictions. That's how we grow as soldiers. That's how we grow as an army. And that's how we grow as a joint force. By honoring Captain Swenson's actions today, we honor the heroes who have sacrificed for this nation, along with every service member who has raised their right hand to defend this country and our ideals. Throughout our history and over the course of the last 12 years of war, I have seen firsthand how U.S. Army soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines have served with competence, character, and commitment that this great nation deserves. Captain Swenson is the epitome of these qualities and much, much more. Having demonstrated his leadership in the ultimate crucible of combat. The strength of our nation is our army. The strength of our army is our soldiers. The strength of our soldiers is our families. And that's what makes us army strong. Thank you very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of the Army. Good afternoon. I was just checking if it was afternoon. You know, as I was sitting listening to the chief, I looked at the stage as all of you are. And like many of you, I've had the honor of attending literally dozens of events here, but never so much as in this kind of occasion does this uh, place look so special and so beautiful, and fittingly so. Um, and speaking of beautiful, you all look good. Uh, the chief, as he always does, did a great job uh, in introducing uh, individuals by name. I'm not going to recount all of those. Uh, just know you're all very, very welcome, and uh, we all deeply appreciate your attendance. Uh, whether you be part of this civilian or uh, Army uniform family or a member of the Department of Defense family, we're, we're deeply appreciative. Uh, I do want to say a couple of special uh, welcomes uh, to our distinguished members of uh, my former haunt for 17 years, the House of Representatives. Welcome. So how you doing? <laughs> so how we doing? <laughs> we'll talk later. You are truly welcome, and thank you for a very busy time of coming here and sharing this special moment. Mr. Secretary, Secretary Hagel, as always, we uh, deeply appreciate your personal attention to these kinds of occasions, your uh, deep concern you bring for the men and women in uniform and their families, and your presence here today is uh, making this uh, an even more special occasion. But we would not have an event, to state the obvious, without uh, Captain Will Swenson, without uh, the love and support of his parents, Carl and Julia, uh, the continued love uh, and special relationship with Kelsey Long, all of the distinguished guests that uh, he and others have brought with them. Um, you make this moment uh, what it is. By way of confession, I have to tell you, whenever I share a dais with the Secretary of Defense, I get a little bit more self-conscious about my remarks. And I, I want to be honest with you as well. I'd, I'm a little even more on edge this this afternoon, and, and frankly, Mr. Secretary, it doesn't have much to do with you. It's Will's mom's presence that has me a little nervous. Now, if you had an occasion to read or see President Obama's remarks yesterday at the White House during that very touching ceremony, he observed um, that uh, both uh, the captain's parents are uh, retired Seattle University professors, Carl. Uh, a math professor, that one field of study that perhaps more than any other drove me into political science. <laughs> and, uh, but more frightening, Julia's field was English. And uh, as the president again noted, she made sure that even at a young age, Will not just dotted his I's and crossed his T's, but he practiced perfect grammar at all times. So, Julia, ma'am, uh, I've done my best today and will continue <laughs> to ensure correct usage and correct syntax, or as we say back home where I'm from, I, I hope I got good English. So, <laughs> most importantly, truly, thank you both for being here. You have much to be proud of. I guess I should say you have much of which to be proud. To be <laughs> proud. Either way. To state the obvious, this is uh, a tremendous honor for the Army, and if I may, for me personally, as we gather to uh, induct Captain William David Swenson into our Hall of Heroes. Um, the first officer in the United States Army to receive the Medal of Honor for any conflict since the Vietnam War. And that makes a special occasion even more special. This is also, as Will himself has said, a, a time of mixed emotions, a time when we pay tribute to uncommon valor, but at the same time, we mourn and remember the horrible loss of comrades and friends. The Battle of Ganjagal was ferocious, 
and it was tragic. And we lost so many good lives that day. But following the violence and the death came inspiration. And we were inspired by those who fought there, by those who would not accept defeat. And as the chief noted, we are indeed honored to have many of those warriors who fought by Will's side that day, his battle buddies joining us, both Army and Marines. And I deeply appreciate the rightful recognition you gave them. But I would say to you, if you question what this concept of jointness is about, if you really doubt it's being applied, look at this battle. Look at those uniforms. I don't think you'll question it anymore. Gentlemen, God love you. God bless you for your service and for all that you not just did that day, but every day that you've served in uniform. I also say that from that single fierce battle, two medals of honor, two Navy crosses, a silver star, nine bronze stars with V device, that is an amazing measure of honor. And even by that incredible standard, Will Swenson is truly a hero amongst heroes. And today, because of this event, he'll have his name enshrined along with those who have gone before, uh, forever a part of our nation and our Army's history. And his name will be displayed alongside such others as Alvin York and Audie Murphy and Les Sabo. Now, the reason I single out Les Sabo even though his name, certainly outside this room, may not be as recognizable as others, is that uh, his story and Will's offer, an, uh, offer a common and an important lesson for our Army. About a year and a half ago, I stood in this very room, close to this very spot, as we inducted Specialist Sabo into our Hall of Heroes. And that followed a ceremony in which Les's family received the Medal of Honor at the White House just the day before. In 1970, Les Sabo sacrificed his life in a faraway field in Cambodia. And he did so to save the lives of his fellow soldiers. For more than 40 years, his story was all but lost to anyone outside of his family. And as you may recall, that was the case until a writer happened to stumble upon his records and his file in the National Archives. And that writer began to push anew for the Medal of Honor that should have been awarded decades earlier. And today, we similarly pause to bestow yet an overdue honor once more. Now, I couldn't do much for Les Sabo at the time, and perhaps there is something uh, Will, I hope I can do for you, and as I know you feel even more importantly for those who may follow in your footsteps. This morning I issued a directive requiring that all Medal of Honor nominations be sent immediately to the awards and decorations branch of the Army Human Resources Command. As soon as an honor, honors packet is created at the battalion level, we will have immediate visibility at Army headquarters. Each subsequent command's review will also be required to be immediately forward to HRC. And in return, HRC will follow up with the original command every 30 days until that award packet reaches its final review. A parallel process that will provide greater oversight a way by which we can ensure that no future award packet is lost along the way or paperwork misplaced or somehow forgotten in the fog of war. Our heroes have always taught us many things, and that's true here today, because sometimes our heroes teach us how to make ourselves better, and will for that as well. I, we all, want to thank you. But Will's taught us a lot more than just how to make our processes better. He's also taught us about things like valor and courage and teamwork and sacrifice. And there's more. To prepare for today, I watched some of the videos that uh, we coerced Will into, into doing, and uh, he did incredibly well. 
And for all of the impressive things that I heard from him, I was particularly struck by something he said in relation to that day. As the chief noted, on that day we lost three Marines, First Lieutenant Michael Johnson, Gunnery Sergeant Edward Edwin Johnson, and Staff Sergeant Aaron Kennefick. Lost a Navy Corpsman, James Layton, and about a month later, Army Sergeant Kenneth Westbrook, the uh, soldier whose forehead Will gently kissed as he lifted him on board the medevac helicopter. Now, I know their families have already been recognized, but I would ask respectfully that we pause once more to remember their sacrifice and to again thank them for each of them being here today. Join with me. And I would say from the bottom of my heart, no matter what uniform your loved one wore, from this day forward, you are all a beloved part of our Army family. God bless you and thank you. We also lost nine Afghans, men whose names Americans will likely never know, at least not in large numbers. And in the interview I mentioned, Will spoke about them, their sacrifice, and their struggling nation. And we'll observe, and I'm going to quote here, the Afghan people in Kunar province got to see their government, their leaders, their soldiers, their brothers out there trying to do the right thing, trying to find the Afghan solution to their problems. He concluded they saw the Afghans fight. In telling the story of those Afghans, those warriors who fought alongside them that day, in witness to their courage and conviction, Will may have taught us the most important lesson of all. He taught us all there's hope. Hope comes in many forms, comes in many faces and many voices. Where a baby's cry is heard, there's hope that the world will go on. Where a teacher, someone who has devoted their entire lifetime, not to power, not to glory, not to money, but for the conveyance of knowledge, when that teacher speaks in understanding tones to a struggling student, there's hope for a better future. And when a prayer of remembrance is said over the casket of a fallen hero, what that soldier died for, freedom, liberty, and the right to breathe free, that sacrifice gives us hope that all the people of the world, wherever they may live, may one day realize what is universally proclaimed as the American dream. Since 1775, the Army, the United States Army, along the comrades in arms that we have with the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, them together as a band of warriors has continuously brought hope continuously brought that dream to the oppressed. Wherever those forces are stationed, they have always brought hope. Will, and you and your comrades that day were many things, but you were true messengers of hope. Yes to the Afghan people. And we need hope, however, also to every American who, like all of us, has lived in the cloak of freedom and liberty that the courage and skill and conviction of the American soldier has provided for more than 238 years, that that freedom will endure into the future as well. As well. And well, that, that's a high honor, but in its own way, it's a heavy burden. And through your service, your courage, your leadership and sacrifice, you've given me, you've given us all hope. So, Captain Swenson, congratulations to you to your family on this very, very special tribute, and thank you, too, on behalf of our Army, our nation, for your service and your valor. God bless you. God bless the United States of America and this glorious Army that keeps her free. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of Defense. Thank you. Good afternoon, Secretary McHugh, General Odierno, Sergeant Major Chandler, Chairman Dempsey. Ladies and gentlemen, the men and women who serve our country today in uniform, the civilian employees who support our men and women in uniform, uh, and in particular our special guests here this afternoon who have uh, been recognized, and our most uh, honored guest, Captain Swenson and his family. Uh, I have a um, quite elegant speech, of course, uh, but uh, I will dispense uh, with these uh, eloquent words, and I'm going to uh, make a couple of comments, I hope, uh, that will add to the true eloquence of uh, the chiefs and Secretary's comments. Uh, I could not uh, uh, improve on, or I don't mean to duplicate uh, what uh, they said, what President Obama said yesterday, what everyone in this room uh, knows about uh, this very special individual. Uh, let me um, add my thoughts this way. Many important words have been said about Will Swenson, appropriately so, over the last few days. Uh, one particular point that President Obama made yesterday was that at a time in our country uh, when we need more unifying dimensions and dynamics to remind us who we are, uh, yes, uh, as a great nation, but even more importantly, um, as a good people. The Will Swenson story does that. Uh, it does remind us who we are. Sacrifices, service, going beyond your own personal ambitions, your own personal interests, and serving the interests of others first. Uh, I don't know uh, a more complete picture that could be presented or example noted uh, of that selflessness than the story of Will Swenson and those who have gone before and every man and woman uh, in the history of this great republic who has given so much of themselves and the people in this room and all over the world who continue to do that. Uh, Will. Uh, you mean an awful lot to a lot of people. But your biggest contribution probably will come later. And that is uh, the role model that you have already projected, not just for men and women in uniform, but the next generations behind you. Uh, we all recognize as parents, as individuals who have any responsibility for our positions in life, that that is our biggest most significant responsibility to improve upon the inheritance that we were each given, the blessings and the good things. We, we know about bad things, but that's the, not our role. Our role is to improve, make it better, inspire, uplift uh, our people, our families, our country, uh, and the world. And uh, as President Obama noted yesterday, the Will Swenson story is a great reminder of those responsibilities and how we can do it uh, with dignity, with eloquence, uh, with never asking anything uh, in return. I want to also note something that uh, was said here today, mentioned by the chief, mentioned by the secretary. Um, yes. Will Swenson proved his valor on the battlefield. It is well documented. It should be well documented. But he also did something else that represented tremendous courage and integrity. And I've always thought uh, the two indispensable elements of anyone's life are courage and character. And if we're without those, 
in, in some measure, it's a, a pretty hollow existence. Uh, he questioned, he dared to question the institution that he was faithful to and loyal to. Mistakes were made in his case. Now, that's courage, and that's integrity, and that's character. As the institution itself reflected on that same courage and integrity institutionally, the institution, the United States Army, corrected the mistake. They went back and acknowledged a mistake was made, and they fixed it. Another great dimension of our republic, of our people, we have an inherent capability to self-correct. Free people have that capability if they have the will and the courage to self-correct. And we all do in our own personal lives. Institutions don't always. Eventually, they will be forced to. In this case, uh, the United States Army was not forced to. It did self-correct. It was a wrong. They corrected it. They fixed it. Uh, we're sorry that uh, you and your family had to endure uh, through that, but you did, and you handled it right. And uh, I think that deserves a tremendous amount of attention and credit. We celebrate uh, you today, Will. We celebrate your family. We celebrate your very brave uh, colleagues uh, who have been recognized, those who didn't make it back, their families today, uh, but we celebrate all the good things about our country today because of you, and we're grateful. May God bless you and your family, Will. Thank you. Thank you. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, has awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor to Captain William D. Swenson, United States Army. Captain William D. Swenson distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, while serving as embedded advisor to the Afghan National Border Police, Task Force Phoenix, Combined Security Transition Command Afghanistan in support of 1st Battalion, 32nd Infantry Regiment, 3rd Brigade Combat Team, 10th Mountain Division. During combat operations against an armed enemy in Kunar Province, Afghanistan, on September 8, 2009. On that morning, more than 60 well-armed, well-positioned enemy fighters ambushed Captain Swenson's combat team as it moved on foot into the village of Ganjgal for a meeting with village elders. As the enemy unleashed a barrage of rocket-propelled grenade, mortar, and machine gun fire, Captain Swenson immediately returned fire and coordinated and directed the response of his Afghan border police, while simultaneously calling in suppressive artillery fire and aviation support. After the enemy effectively flanked coalition forces, Captain Swenson repeatedly called for smoke to cover the withdrawal of the forward elements. Surrounded on three sides by enemy forces, inflicting effective and accurate fire, Captain Swenson coordinated air assets, indirect fire support, and medical evacuation helicopter support to allow for the evacuation of the wounded. Captain Swenson ignored enemy radio transmissions demanding surrender, and maneuvered uncovered to render medical aid to a wounded fellow soldier. Captain Swenson stopped administering aid long enough to throw a grenade at approaching enemy forces before assisting with moving the soldier for air evacuation. With complete disregard for his own safety, Captain Swenson unhesitatingly led a team in an unarmored vehicle into the kill zone, exposing himself to enemy fire 
on at least two occasions to recover the wounded and search for four missing comrades. After using aviation support to mark locations of fallen and wounded comrades, it became clear that ground recovery of the fallen was required due to heavy enemy fire on helicopter landing zones. Captain Swenson's team returned to the kill zone another time in a Humvee and voluntarily exited the vehicle, exposing himself to enemy fire to locate and recover three fallen Marines and one fallen Navy corpsman. His exceptional leadership and stout resistance against the enemy during six hours of continuous fighting rallied his teammates and effectively disrupted the enemy's assault. Captain William D. Swenson's extraordinary heroism and selflessness above and beyond the call of duty are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, Task Force Phoenix, 1st Battalion, 32nd Infantry Regiment, 3rd Brigade Combat Team, 10th Mountain Division, and the United States Army. The War on Terrorism plaque will now be unveiled, inducting Captain Swenson into the Hall of Heroes. At this time, the Secretary of Defense will present the Medal of Honor flag. On 23 October 2002, Public Law 107-248, Section 8143, established the Medal of Honor flag to recognize service members who have distinguished themselves by gallantry in action above and beyond the call of duty. The Medal of Honor flag commemorates the sacrifice and bloodshed for our freedoms and gives emphasis to the Medal of Honor being the highest award for valor by an individual serving in the armed forces of the United States. The light blue color with gold fringe bearing 13 white stars are adapted from the Medal of Honor ribbon. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Swenson. Thank you. I come from the other Washington, so much the horror of my speechwriter, I'm going off topic again. I can tell you what I believe. I look in this crowd and I see the strength of a nation and I, th I see the strength of a fighting force one that I fought proudly with. I look to my fellow Marines, Army, Navy, and Air Force, a team that I fought with side by side as brothers. It was the proudest moment of my life, and I'm honored, privileged to know these men. I thank them all. And then I look at the strength of a nation. I look at the Gold Star families who picked up where their service members left off. 
And I see true strength. Fathers, husbands, sons, lost. But their mission continues through those families. I find strength in their strength. Our nation should find strength in their strength. I thank you for being here. I thank you for recognizing my team. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Swenson. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join in the singing of the Army Song. The words to the Army Song can be found in your program. March along, sing a song with the Army of the Free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. Story. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. For wherever we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, Please pause for a moment at your seats to allow the official party to exit the auditorium. <laughs> 